football fans, I'm Chris Terrell. I'm here for RotorPros.com and DailyFantasySportsRankings.com to bring you a video just kind of going over my Daily Fantasy Football Cheat Sheet that I update every week. Uh, it's most it's best utilized for DraftKings and FanDuel, Daily Fantasy Sports, but uh, I definitely use a, a lot for referencing matchups and stuff like that when it comes to my season-long leagues as well, so you can definitely find some value there for it as well. Um, so without further ado, let's just jump right in. Um, first page you're going to see when you open the sheet is going to be the matchup tab. So I've got every matchup here. We've got uh, the home teams on the right here. So we've got the New York Jets on Thursday Night Football going into Cleveland. And then just below we've kind of reversed it just so that we can look at offense and defense for both teams. So just looking at the first one, I'll just go over the Jets matchup here. So the Jets are plus three in Cleveland. Um, as you can see, it's always the team. You want to go in the left tab. So Cleveland's going to be the minus three Jets. Are going to be the plus three. We've got projected points here that I, uh, I figure out when it comes down to looking at the over under and the spread. So we've got a 39 and a half, pretty low total this week. And then looking at the Jets passing rank, they are 21st overall. And these are just some metrics that I'm looking at. And then uh, looking at the opponent defense versus the pass, Cleveland is eighth overall. So they're a top 10 defense when it comes down to uh, passing. So the differential here is just kind of between the two. And you obviously want, uh, I highlight everything, um, use colors. So red is bad, green is good. So as you can tell, there's a lot of orangey and red going on here. So the matchups just aren't that great in this game. Could be a low scoring affair, minus 13 there. Uh, the Jets are 30th in rush offense out of 32 teams and Cleveland's 11th. So overall, Cleveland's defense has been pretty good, ranking eighth and 11th so far against the pass and the run. And then over here in the pink, what you see is fantasy points against position. Um, so right now, Cleveland is 14th against quarterbacks, 21st against wide receivers, 7th against tight ends, and 26th versus running backs. So then you can do the same for Cleveland. This is looking at Cleveland's passing versus the Jets' defense. This is Cleveland's running versus the Jets' run defense. And then this would be the Jets are 7th against the QB, 18th against wide receiver and fantasy points against 5th versus tight ends and 8th versus running backs. So you can use that for any of these matchups here. Um, so yeah, this is Thursday Night Football. Then we get into the main slate. And as you can see, there's two games right off the bat in the morning. Uh, New Orleans at Atlanta and San Francisco at KC that have over 50 totals. Um, definitely going to be targeting players in there. The other thing to note this week, there's only two teams who are road favorites, and that's Green Bay at minus three. And then we've got Chicago uh, going into Arizona as a six-point favorite as well in the low-scoring game. Uh, we'll touch on that one here in a little bit, but uh, definitely going to be looking at Chicago's defense. So you can use that to break down any matchup um, of the week. Uh, so like for instance, KC at San Francisco. I'll go over one more before moving on here. Um, looking at KC, they're a six and a half point favorite, uh, projected for around 31 and a half points in a 56 over under. They're the number one passing offense in the league right now versus San Francisco, who's 22nd in pass defense. So that's a plus 21. That's a really good matchup for the KC pass game. They're ninth in rushing, but San Francisco has been pretty good against the run, ranking ninth in uh, um, offense or defense against the, the rush but uh, looking at the fantasy points against as you can as you can tell obviously because San Francisco's 22nd against the pass over there um, looking at fantasy points against their 25th against the quarterback 24th against the wide receiver 13th against the tight end and 19th against the running back so definitely going to be looking at um, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Sammy Watkins, Tyree Kill, kind of that whole passing game. Um, if it hits that 56 and a half total, it's definitely going to be a lot of points to go around, and and it's definitely legit to go ahead and target two or three, some maybe even four Kansas City players in your lineups. Um, that'd be a little bit more contrarian going with four, but three is definitely in play this week. So that's the matchups. Like I said, you can go through anyone right now. We don't have a total, as you can see here. It's blank. On the Tennessee Jacksonville, right near news on uh, Leonard Fournette for Jacksonville, as well as Marcus Mariota on Tennessee. So I will have that updated uh, when that news and when that uh, line comes out. So that's where I kind of start the week. Is I'll, I'll look and I'll just kind of highlight and write down the teams uh, in the matchups that I'm really going to be targeting most, and then uh, from there I move on. Um, before going position by position here, as you can see at the bottom, um, I'm going to look at some of the other options that I have on this sheet. So we've got DraftKings salary trends. So you can go look at any player. And uh, best, I just use Control F, and then I'll just go search whatever player I'm looking for. But a few ways that I do use this is, first of all, I'll go and look at that one-week trend, which that's just price this week versus price last week. So 
I'll go look at who has increased the most when it comes to salary. Obviously, that's Gio Bernard. Uh, with Joe Mixon out, he is up $2,100 from last week. So you can see what their price was every single week, and then you look at the one-week trend. I'm going to be adding a little bit more to this, um, you know, like average salary for the season and stuff like that as we get a little bit deeper. Uh, I've been adding a little bit to this sheet every single week. So I'm going to try and do regular videos just to kind of show you the changes. Um, and as new people come on board and want to learn about the sheet, maybe can't find the video on my on my own personal YouTube channel or the Roto Pros YouTube channel or the Daily Fantasy Sports Reckons YouTube channel. I'm just going to keep coming out with more videos. So next up, we've got Antonio Callaway. Uh, Josh Gordon's out of town in Cleveland now. They traded him to the Patriots, so Callaway steps in um, as the number two. His price has gone up from pretty much min price up to 4400 Still a pretty good value if he's going to be running uh, second fiddle there. And then uh, we've got Kenny Galladay. He's been just tremendous in his first two weeks, so no, no surprise seeing his price go up. Latavius Murray's price goes up. He, he doesn't get a bulk of the carries or touches in that Minnesota backfield, but the Vikings are a minus 17-point favorite this week. Could be a definite blowout come the second half, and they may choose to sit Dalvin Cook, who's coming off like a season-ending injury last year early in the season. So uh, Latavius Murray could get some run, and I think at you know with that price increase like that, he's going to be pretty low-owned. Could make a nice GPP play there. So then we got Tevin Coleman. He's filling in for the injured uh, Devonta Freeman there. Uh, Malcolm Brown, Tyree Kill, Brandon Cooks, and so on. So the other way I'll go is I'll go up and just click on anywhere in that one-week trend in the B column, and then I'll go up to data and sort A to Z, and look at it from the other way. Whose prices come down? Obviously, Delaney Walker's prices come down. He's out right now um, with an injury. David Johnson's prices come down. He might be one to target for GPPs. He hasn't been getting a lot of touches. The Arizona defense is on, or offense has only scored six points so far this year, so that's a little risky there. But uh, they'll be looking to throw him the ball more, so especially on DraftKings, I think he's going to make sense. Philip Rivers' price, uh, Calvin Benjamin, Drew Brees, and I'll just kind of look at it that way. So from both sides of the fence, I'll just go and kind of look and analyze whose price has gone up and gone down. I think that's a useful tool um, when thinking of daily fantasy as kind of like a stock market and buy low, sell high kind of thing. So definitely look at that. And then I've got the same thing for FanDuel. So I go about it the same way. So Philip Lindsay is the top guy on Fandle who's gone up this week, up to 6,400. He's kind of a surprise undrafted rookie. He's taking uh, some touches from Royce Freeman there in the back. He's been more explosive, um, so his price has definitely gone up. Patrick Mahomes, who's been just off the page <laughs> a little bit. I talked about him in my recap article. He's maybe a little bit uh, touchdown lucky right now. Okay, not a little bit. He has been very touchdown lucky. He's got 10 touchdowns through two games. That's just not sustainable going forward, but his price has gone up. They have a very electric offense. So while I don't see him throwing four to six touchdowns every week, two or three is definitely uh, is there in a, in a lot of the matchups that they're going to face this season. And then just like DraftKings, we've got Tevin Coleman, Gio Bernard. They're both up as well. So after uh, analyzing those salary differentials, um, I like to go and I break down every week after Monday night game is over and just kind of look at... Uh, um, snap count percentage, like how much is the player on the field. So I'm just going to hide this to get rid of some of the clutter on the page. One more here. So this is just the average. I'm going to write that in. forgot to do that. This is just a name match just so, you know, there's a, a lot of different sites spell names different, so I just like to put in a match there so it's all um, together and it all looks the same so we don't have any empty columns or anything. But anyways, so I like to look at um, usage, how much a guy's on the field. So I'll usually go, quarterbacks are mostly 100% unless teams are, like, I mean, Lamar Jackson's getting some some uh, snaps behind center in Baltimore's offense. They got some plays developed for him. But mostly I want to look at the running backs, wide receivers, tight ends. So, like, James Conner, he's been out there 92%, 82%. Of the overall team snaps, he's been on the field for 92%, 88%. So that's what these numbers represent. Then this is the average for the season. You're also going to see that data um, on the individual player tabs as well. But that's where that comes from. And I like to calculate that every week as well. Next is targets. So not only do we want to know what players are on the field, but who's getting targeted in the pass game. So right off the bat it's sorted by average targets per week so as you can see Antonio Brown's got 16 17 targets the first two weeks he's averaging 16 and a half he's number one there right now and then up next we got Michael Thomas and Julio Jones Golden Tate so these are guys that you know especially when you're trying to construct your cash game lineups that you're going to want to look at 
because they're getting targeted a ton. So then I'll cross-reference that with, okay, guys that are getting targeted a lot, are they on the field? So, for instance, let's go look at, uh, just for, okay, let's go Adam Thielen. He's got double-digit targets in two weeks. I wrote about him in the Cash Game article on Roto Pros this week. So we're going to go over here and we're going to search Thielen. As you can see, he's on the field 96% of the time of the team snap. So definitely a guy that I think makes a lot of sense in cash games. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but if you were to find a guy that's, you know, maybe top 10, top 20 in targets per week on the season, but is maybe under 80% um, when it comes to the snap count percentage, that's more of a guy that I'm going to target for um, when it comes to GPP formats. So that's kind of how I analyze that. So then from there, I like to go um, by position, and I load this straight from DraftKings and FanDuel, and there's a lot of information going on here, so I'm going to uh, go through this a little bit more in depth. So we sort by salary. Right now it's sorted by DK. Over here on the left, I've, I've labeled it, uh, you know, we've got Thursday night football games, Sunday night football, and Monday night football. So the ones that are blank that I have nothing, that's going to be your main slate on Sunday. And that's kind of what I target when I write my articles and stuff, is looking at that main slate because there's 13 games there every week um, now that we're in, you know, we're out of week one and before the, the bye weeks are going to change a little bit. So there may be only 10 to 12 games on the main slate, but that's that's what everyone's targeting for the most part. That's where your Millie Maker is. So that's what that means. So then I highlight the plays. Uh, green is kind of like any format. Blue is going to be GPPs. Now I haven't highlighted all my favorite plays yet. I'm kind of in the midst of doing that um, before I recorded this video. So definitely check back, bookmark this page uh, going into Sunday so that you can see um, all my favorite targets at each position. So we've got salary for both. We've got the same team projected points and the spread that you can find on the matchups page. And then we've got the same, uh, that team. So Minnesota is fifth in passing so far this season. Buffalo is 32nd. So that's a plus 27. So that's a really good matchup for Cousins. But the other thing I look at is it's a minus 17 spread. So if they do end up blowing out Buffalo, you know, go into the second half of the, say, a 20-point lead, something like that, Cousins may not play the whole game. But, again, in turn, if they're going to get that big of a lead, he's probably going to be involved. He's been incredible, the, you know, throughout the first two weeks. And you can kind of look at that. So right beside the pink, right beside that offense, defense, team offense, defense, I've also got the opponent defense versus that position, which is quarterback in this case, um, fantasy points against. So Buffalo's allowed the 26 most fantasy points against the quarterbacks. Ray Blom is Jimmy Garoppolo. Kansas City has allowed the most fantasy points to quarterbacks so far this season. So, and then going over, we've got the 2018 snaps. So we've got passing attempts. We've got completions. We've got completion percentage. We've got total yards. We've got touchdowns. We've got yards per attempt. Now that's something I like to look at. For instance, Patrick Mahomes. He isn't getting a ton of attempts. You can see he's only got 55 attempts, which is the least going down of all the starters until you get down to, like, Ryan Tannehill and Dak Prescott. So he's not getting a ton of attempts. So, I mean, it kind of tells you he's been a little touchdown hot. He's got 10 touchdowns, 69% completion percentage, which is pretty good. But he, for upside, he's averaging 10.6 yards per attempt. So he's getting the ball down the field. And that's what we like to see, especially in GPP formats. So we've got the snap count percentage. I mean, for quarterbacks, that's not going to change a bunch because the quarterback, for the most part, is going to be on the field pretty much for all the offensive snaps for that team. So we've got 2017 stats, if you just want to go back and compare to last year. And anywhere you see these uh, NA where no stats are, are popping up in on the page, that's just like Carson Wentz hasn't... This is his first week back, so he's going to have no stats there. Um... Over on the 2017 stats, that's going to be like Andrew Luck didn't play last year, Mitchell Trubisky. Um, I think that's a match problem. They probably got him labeled as Mitch in one of my pages, so I'll definitely go ahead and fix that. Ryan Tannehill was out. Uh, and then, you got, of course, you got your rookies who aren't going to have any stats from 2017. So moving on to the running back position. Same thing. I've got the labels for the slate. Um, I've highlighted my green for cash plays, all formats. Red means they're, either, they're out or I'm fading them. In this case, Bell, um, I believe the news, he still hasn't reported, so he's going to be out again this week. And then we got blue as the GPP ones I'm looking at. So we've got uh, salary, same thing, FanDuel salary, DraftKings salary, team projected points, the spread of the game. So for running backs, I really like to look at home teams with big spread. 
um, you know, when looking at cash games. So we've got Todd Gurley, like him. Um, he's minus, minus seven. The Rams are at home. And then you've got uh, Dalvin Cook. Like I mentioned before, they're minus 17 point favorites. So I think Dalvin Cook's going to get a lot of run if they get up early. They get up 10, 14 points. I think he's going to get that 15 plus carries this week against Buffalo. And then, uh, of course, we've got the offensive rank, which is the rush. Uh, rushing rank for the team. We've got the opponent defense versus the rush. We've got the differential again. Um, so anyone in green, that's going to be a good, like we've got, uh, well, obviously Love Bell, but we're going to be looking at James Conner down a little bit here. He's right here, and I was going to highlight him a GPP play. Um, as you can see, they're eighth in rushing so far this year, while Tampa Bay is 23rd in rush defense. So that's one place you can attack Tampa Bay. It's a plus 15 Differential there, so definitely looking at that. They've allowed the third, 30th, so the third most uh, fantasy points to running back so far this season, Tampa Bay has. So same thing over here. We've got the 2018 stats. We've got rushing attempts, rushing yards, yards per attempt. We've got touchdowns, um, how many targets they've got in the passing game, and then we've got targets per game. So as you can see, Christian McCaffrey at 12 targets per game is huge. He's not getting a ton of rushes. He, when he does rush, he is averaging 4.8 per carry, which is really good. He's just not getting, he hasn't even had 20 rushing attempts so far this year. But he leads all running backs so far with 24 targets, 12 per game. Um, caught 20 of those, 20 of the 24 for 147 yards. So definitely looking at him. Um, when it comes to GPPs, I like a little more volume in the run game um, when it comes to, and of course they've got a low total, 23.5 for, for projected team points. And only a minus three favorite. So I like to look at a little more volume when it comes down to cash games. But for GPPs, he makes a ton of sense, especially on full PPR sites like DraftKings. So then over here, um, this isn't what we got. This is something I've been working on as a running back touch share. So every running back that gets a reception or a carry during the week for that team, I calculate that for each team. So as you can see, we'll just go back to McCaffrey. Out of the running backs there, CJ Anderson's there as well, but you think that would be a little bit scary, but Christian McCaffrey is getting 75.6% of the touches in that Carolina backfield. I'd like to see that even better down low. You got Ezekiel Elliott's getting 97.4% of the touches. Um, that's receptions and rush and rushes in that offense. Another one that stands out, James Conner, of course. Um, then you start getting down. That's I like to look at a little bit more when you get into that value range because you start looking at like Gio Bernard. Take that with a grain of salt because uh, that first two weeks. Joe Mixon was in there, and he was commanding the backfield. Now it's going to be Gio Bernard, so keep that in mind. When looking at some of these numbers, you got to dig a little bit deeper sometimes when you're looking at backups who are just coming into a starting job. But like Kareem Hunt, um, some people were worried maybe Spencer Ware was going to take some, some uh, workload away from him. He has seen 80% of the touches in that uh, Kansas City backfield, and he's out there on 70% of the snaps. So definitely good there. Now I'm just going to search Ware. Spencer Ware is only getting 11% of the touches and 13% of the snaps. Um, he's been out there. So definitely I think Kareem Hunt has a lot of upside. I'm going to highlight him as well while I'm here. So that's how I use that. I kind of look at what running backs are getting the bulk of the touches, um, especially ones where there's a running back uh, by, you know, a committee running back going on. Um, like Melvin Gordon's only getting 60% of the touches. Now that is because uh, Eckler's been running the ball quite a bit. Like you can see Melvin Gordon's only rushed 24 times this year, but he is second, or sorry, third in targets with 20. So he's been heavily involved in the pass game, fourth in targets, uh, I've got Chris Thompson down here. So that's another one. Chris Thompson's only getting 40% of the touch share uh, with Adrian Peterson kind of taking those first and second down um, rushes between the tackles and stuff like that. But Chris Thompson has been huge when it comes to the passing game with 10.5 targets per game, 19 catches for 155 yards. So I definitely, I wrote him up as my a cash game running back as well at that price, looking at the mid-range there. So definitely looking at that. Um, 2017 stats, same thing. This is just the stats from last year. I don't have the touch share or anything like that. Uh, just something I started calculating this year. So as we move into the, you know, the 2019 season, I'm going to have all this data moved over from the year before just so we can kind of compare from year to year what's going on for each team. Jumping into the wide receiver, I, I just touch on a couple more running backs that I like here this week. I like Jordan Howard 
for cash games as well in that mid tier. I'm really looking at going uh, for cash games at least, going with two mid tier uh, running backs for cash. Um, you can see them in my article. They're six point favorites. They are on the road, but Arizona's allowed the most rushing yards to running back, or sorry, the most fantasy points to running backs so far this season. Uh, he's rushed 29 times, 117 yards. He hasn't got in the end zone yet. Um, so that's something I'd like to see that will come up is those touchdowns will eventually come as long as he keeps getting the ball. And he is. He's getting 73% of the of the touch share in the backfield um, over Cohen, who Cohen is down here. He's only getting 25%. And he Howard has also been on the field for 72% of the snaps. Cohen's only been on the field for 36%. So I like to see that trend that Howard is out there. Um, they've got a dominant defense. Um, they're favorites in the game against a team that's allowed a lot of points to running backs this year. Everything just kind of checks every box there um, at 6,500 on DraftKings, 7,400 on FanDuel. I think that makes a lot of sense. I'm only looking to um, – the thing with going up to Todd Gurley in cash games, who I like, he's targeted a lot, he runs it a lot. He's like a focal point of their offense um, for the Rams, is that you really have to either punt – um, your tight end, your defense, and possibly even a wide receiver or another running back, the prices have adjusted a bit this week. So that's kind of why I'm going towards more of a balanced approach when it comes to cash games. Next up, we've got the wide receivers. Um, just kind of started highlighting them, so I've only got two guys, and they're the two that I wrote up in my article. But same thing, we've got team, opponent, uh, salary, projected point spread, um, offensive pass, passing rank, defensive against the pass rank we've got uh, defense versus position when it comes to fantasy points so we've got targets targets per game receptions catch percentage that's something that's big for wide receivers um, so I'll be looking at GPP if a guy's like under 75 percent catch rate which right now Antonio Brown leads the league in targets with 33 but he's only catching 54.5 percent of his balls once he starts, you know, the opportunity's there, but he's really expensive for only catching 54.5% of the balls. So once that starts coming back to, you know, 60 70% uh, where he's been for his career, I'll start targeting him in cash games. Whereas a guy like uh, Mike Evans has changed a little bit from last year. As you can see, you scroll over and look at his 2017 stats. He was only catching 52% of his balls last year on a ton of targets 136 so far this year he's averaging nine and a half targets per game through the two games with ryan fitzpatrick who has been on fire but he's catching 90 percent of his balls and that's a that's huge when it comes to uh quarterback success as your you know your wide receivers catching the balls and the quarterback's doing better getting them the ball but the receiver's also doing better catching that ball so that's just some things i look at when breaking down gpp versus uh cash games when looking at wide receivers so we've got yards per game, we've got yards, touchdowns, uh, snap percentage. So I like to see uh, wide receivers that are on the field for at least 75% of the offensive snaps, um, possibly even higher, like Adam Thielen, for instance. He's averaging 12.5 targets per game. Um, he's been running, I believe, like 70%, 75% of his routes from the slot. So he gets some good matchups there on most weeks. And he's on the field 96% of the time. So I always take Thielen. It's always Thielen digs, Thielen digs, and I'm a Minnesota fan. Um, but what I've seen, even last year, you look at the targets, um, Thielen out-targeted him 142 to 95, and the same trend seems to be going this year as well. It's been a little bit closer so far. Uh, Cousins is, to me, quite a bit of an upgrade in quarterback from Case Keenum, but he still tends to go to Adam Thielen, so I definitely like going with Thielen in cash games. Diggs has a little bit more upside, and I think his performances are just going to be a little bit more up and down uh, versus Thielen's going to be pretty steady. He may not get the total yards at the end of the year, but he's getting targeted more. So that's kind of how I break down um, cash game versus GPP when it comes to wide receivers. Also looking at another one I want to highlight, I talked about in, in the cash game article, Nelson uh, Aguilar. Um, also be looking at, I'll talk about Zach Ertz a little bit, but with Mike Wallace uh, put on the IR, Alshon Jeffries practicing, but he's not going to be back, you know, for like likely not coming back this week, almost 100%, maybe not even for next week. So there's a lot of targets to go around in that Philly offense. They get a good matchup against Indianapolis. And Nelson Aguilar has seen 22 targets, 11 per game so far, 73% catch rate. Uh, he's out there 93% of the time. Zach Ertz has got similar numbers when looking at that. And I just think looking at uh, um, right now, he is 20, the 21st 
priced quarterback, you know, take out the Monday night football, Thursday night and Sunday night football games. He's at a good price in that mid tier as well, going for a balanced lineup. He's going to get a lot of opportunities. He's catching a lot of his balls. So uh, he's one I'm definitely looking at there for cash games as well. And then kind of going down, um, like, I haven't highlighted any other ones yet. I'm going to get to that soon. Like, Sammy Watkins is someone I would look more towards for GPP. He's not getting a ton of targets in the offense. He is out there a lot, so he's getting the opportunities. Um, he's on the field. He he did, you know, his performances are going to be up and down as there's so many targets in that Kansas City um, receiving game when it comes to uh, Travis Kelsey, Sammy Watkins, Kareem Hunt, and then uh, Tyree Kill as well. Um, I think Sammy Watkins kind of falls into that third, fourth target but uh, he does have the upside. He could get some good matchups going forward. Um, San Francisco, they've got a high projected points. Their number one passing offense talked about that. And San Francisco ranks 24th in defense versus the position. So he was someone that I would definitely highlight in blue for GPP formats. Looking at the tight ends. So all the same stats you're going to see. Uh, looking at snap count percentage. So that's going to be big for me. Um, like Jordan Reed's only out there 50, 53% of the time. Um, so that kind of deters me a little bit. I know I've got him ranked here for cash just because Kirk Cousins and Crowder don't seem to have a thing going on right now. They did preseason. They don't really don't right now. So for me, it's Jordan Reed and Chris Thompson for the Redskins. Those are my top two targets when it comes to the passing game. I'm going back to George Kittle this week. Um, his price is still reasonable. It did go up on both sites after a poor performance last week. But he gets a tremendous matchup against Kansas City, who ranks 29th in passing defense right now. They've allowed the most yards. They've allowed the second most points to tight end so far this year. So I just think with the opportunity in a high-scoring game like that, Kittle, I'm going to definitely give him another chance. If he has a good week this week, he's probably going to be in that 5K range, uh, just kind of below Jordan Reed. Uh, Greg Olson's out hurt. But right in that Jimmy Graham, Jordan Reed, zone so i want to take advantage before that price goes up one more time if, especially if he has a good matchup this week another one that i've been breaking down um is the indianapolis tight end situation so looking at i'm going to look at jack doyle and eric ebron so doyle what i like for cash games is doyle ebron is going to be my gpp and the reason why look at jack doyle he's out there he's got 15 targets to Ebron's nine, so seven and a half to four and a half per game. He's got more receptions, nine to seven so far. He's only got a 60% catch catch rate, but he's been on the field 95% of the offensive snaps versus Ebron's only been out there 37%. I think moving forward, um, as teams start, defensive coordinators start analyzing that, Ebron being out on the field only 37% of the time, but he's got nine targets, they're really utilizing him when he's on the field. They're throwing it to him. They're targeting him. So, um... You know, if that's something I can pick off, just looking at some simple stats like this on my sheet, I think defensive coordinators are going to start keen in on that. And the thing is, he scored a touchdown in each of his first two games, and as we know, touchdowns just aren't as predictable um, or steady. So, you know, he's not going to get a touchdown per game throughout the entire season. That would be, like, incredible Hall of Fame level um, catch rate. But uh, So that's kind of how I break down Doyle and Ebron for, for Indianapolis. As Doyle's out in the field 95% of the time, He's got more targets. That's definitely going to be the guy I'm going to be looking at for cash. Ebron for GPP, he's still in that 3,400 on DraftKings, so I like him a little better on DraftKings, but I'll definitely consider him on FanDuel and GPPs as well at 5,500. After that, we've got defenses, so this looks a little bit different. So what we've got in the green is um, that team's passing yards game per allowed. So just looking at the Vikings here, they've allowed 245 yards passing per game. That ranks about middle of the pack. We've got the opponent passing yards per game. So Buffalo ranks 31st in passing yards per game. Same with rushing. Minnesota's allowed only 94 yards rushing per game, while Buffalo has only got 83.5 rushing yards per game on their offense. So we've got uh, points per game allowed, opponent points per game. So you can look at that as well. Again, green is going to be good when looking at the, any of the ranks here. And then for cash games, when it comes to my defense, I want sacks, um, defensive touchdowns, turnovers. They're not as predictable and they're not as, as consistent. Um, sacks give you a high floor for a team. I mean, you can get scored on 14, 17 points, still get, you know, three, four, five sacks in a game. 
and uh, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to attack and get a high floor there. So, uh, for instance, we've got Minnesota's got seven. We've got the Bears who are leading the league with ten. And then for cheap, I like going down to the Dallas Cowboys. They've got nine. And then uh, opponent giveaways like a team that's going to give turnovers. That's something I look more for upside. As you can see, Detroit has given up six so far giveaways. Tampa Bay's got six. Um, even back with Dallas. Seattle's given up five as well. So that's kind of what I look at there. And then as the week goes on here, uh, either later today or tomorrow, I'm going to be filling out my top GPP stacks. Um, they're going to be listed here. We've got the team, quarterback, wide receiver, whatever targets I'm looking at for that team. So be sure to check back on the sheet for that. That kind of concludes the video going over my sheet. If you have any questions, definitely hit me up in the Rotopros Slack chat. Um, you can join um, hit the sign up button over here at rotopros.com sign up for a two week free trial um, get in on that and if you're looking for my articles you just hit member content here articles right now the articles are free so be free or feel free to go and check them out um, right here you're going to find the week three uh, cash game picks and then I also do a recap article that comes out Monday morning just kind of looking at some things I learned from the last week in football and then uh, Rob comes out with a GPP article. This is his week two article, GPP stacks uh, and deep field stacks. Um, and that usually comes out, I believe, Friday night or first thing Saturday morning. Then he does a video as well looking at his stacks. Him and Josh go over a video as well. On DraftKings, if you have any questions, you can hit me up in the member chat room if you're a member. And if you're not, you can go up here. Um, it won't be login information, but you can click on it. And you'll be able to go and you get a three-day free trial come and check it out ask anyone in chat about the you know the the content we're providing and if you want to look for the nfl articles or college football as you can see here casey comes out with a college football article every week just click on the nfl tab and that's where you're going to find the content there's doug's nfl cash game picks and then we've got the week two recap podcast there's another podcast coming out tomorrow looking at cash games and then another one on friday going game by game um, looking at the top picks for DraftKings and FanDuel as well. Or um, the other place you can hit me up if you're frequent on Twitter, just come over to my Twitter, uh, at me, uh, at Jaeger underscore bombs nine, and you can hit me up there. And you'll, I'll also be, that's my pinned tweet right now is my DFS PGA cheat sheet. Um, so you can click on it there and open up my cheat sheet. But also, if you scroll through my timeline, you're going to find all my articles, all the cheat sheets that I release for all the different sports and stuff like that. So yeah, that pretty much covers everything this week when it comes to week three. Um, so definitely stay tuned. Friday, I also have another article coming out um, on both sites. On Rotopros, I'm kind of looking at some of the top values, some of the cheaper plays that can help fill out your lineups. And then for DraftKings, um, I use Fanshare Sports to, uh, to analyze the ownership projections and then i kind of go with some pivot plays um, off some of the chalk that you can use in gpps especially when it comes to the millie maker thanks for watching the video thanks for checking out the content um, make sure to like the video below if you can and subscribe um, as you'll get uh, notifications when all my videos